Welcome to SelfDiscoveryMedia.com, where we discover the communities that are making a difference in the lives of others. Our self-discovery is something we are all making on our life's journey. Here you will find the people that will be your guidance, that will be your inspiration, that will be there for you in support on your journey of life. Do enjoy. Our next show is... Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of An Author's Kiss right here on selfdiscoverymedia.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my guest today is Kathleen McCarthy, known as Kat. The magic happens. Humanity is thriving out loud. Well, The Magic Happens is a popular online magazine. And the humanity thriving out loud are the articles that are posted there. And Kat is the managing editor and chief discoverer of all the talent that is happening on the magazine. It's her passion. It's her work. And uh, she is a complete believer and believes that people's contributing is contributing to the happiness movement. It's about thriving out loud. It's about happy choices. It's about solutions, uh, positive perspectives. It's uplifting content that reaches the readers and helps those with, the, with that right content to get their message and teaching out to other readers. So today we're going to discover how this magazine came about how people can be a part of it. And if they just simply want to read uplifting, wonderful material, where to find it. Now, put you all on notice here, uh, we are both sneezy today. Um, we're happy and sneezy, so we're both dwarfs, but it is uh, it is most certainly allergy season. And between the two of us, there might be a few sniffles. No, it's not COVID, folks. It's just allergies. Don't worry. And But please forgive us if we're going for the tissue. We're having a sneeze here and there because the allergies are on the attack. Welcome to the show, Kat. Oh, hi. Thanks for having me. Um, you are a uh, Ontarian, so that means you are a Canadian, but you live in Norway, and this is because you met your mm -hmm. husband, and uh, eventually you moved over to Norway. But the magazine came first, didn't it? So, what was it that inspired you to want to put on an online magazine where other people were contributing to the content? Sorry, the screen stopped, so I didn't hear all of your questions. Oh dear, I guess well. so. We're also dealing with frozen computer today, too. Too many people on it around the world. <laughs> so the question was is that you know, you started off in Ontario, you started the magazine, and you met your husband, and you moved to Norway, in which we will unravel as we go. But what made you want to start an online magazine with people contributing content to it? What was the driving force behind there for you? Well, I think it's a number of things. Um, I'm a big picture person, and um, so I usually take on big projects. Um, and I had um, just finished up with another on another project with a bunch of other people, and um, I just felt I needed to do something and move on and do something of my own. So um, one night I was having a glass of wine with a friend on his balcony, and I said, hey, I should start a magazine. So I did. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was just that clear for everybody, right? But, you know, sometimes that clarity does come in those moments, isn't it? And if there wasn't a voice, yeah. you know, kind of behind saying, oh, don't be so silly. You know, instead it was, I should start it. Then obviously things fell into place for it to actually uh, ignite you on that path. Yeah, um, well, I work by a philosophy to do, to, I always do what I can, and I don't worry about the rest, because the universe will fill it in. Yeah. So, yeah. I started, and, you know, counted on everything working out, and eventually it did. Right. Um, originally, and originally, sorry. No, go ahead. Originally. I was just going to say, originally, it was smaller. Um, we only published four times a year, so... And now, due to popularity, it's every month. Um, 
people need a platform you know you know we encourage people to kind of write because the write is an expression you know of, of how people feel um how they're going through a process you know so solutions or uplifting wisdom that we learn you know i think everybody's on their own self-discovery in life you know discovering what knowledge is prevalent you know how to wisely use the knowledge they have how to apply it who is it going to serve and is it serving us and so we encourage people to participate and you know blogging is something that has been around now for a while but people didn't know where to blog to they didn't have a home in which to share that you know epiphany that wonderful nugget of of wisdom you've given people a home to come and participate and share that wonderful wisdom so it's it's a wonderful platform for people who maybe don't have the massive you know, other platforms in order to share have you had a lot of people that are first timers in this yeah um well when i first started the magazine i called all my friends and told them they needed to write for me because if I was going to have a magazine, I needed writers. And most of them uh, who said they didn't know how to write, and many of them started with me anyway. Um, there's a few who are still with me, and this will be our 13th year come July. Um, and they're writing books now. So, so I really like having people come in who just want to learn the craft and mm. nurture them. It's kind of one of the fun things about it for me. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, to see people propel. I've done a lot of, you know, Virgin, what I call Virgin podcasts. It's their first podcast. And, you know, and then they've gone on to doing their own, you know, and it's, we don't know what we're capable of until we participate. You know, it's like if you have an idea, you don't know if you can manifest it. You know, the first thing the mind does is that, yeah, right, yeah, you haven't got the qualifications or you couldn't do that. Oh, who do you think you are? You know, that old negative chatter that's in the back of our minds. But if we, you know, just go stum to that and say, I'm not listening to you, I'm going to try. I'm going to explore and I may fall flat on my backside a few times, but I'll get back up and redirect because if this feels right to me or feels important to me, I'm going to pursue it. Yeah. Um, uh, actually some of the people that started with me, um, were really not very good when they started and I would get their articles and then I'd help them <laughs> so that they would look good and they would feel good. And that was, with them, I think, because they never had to fall. Mm -hmm. I took care. And, and sometimes kind of seeing how their words can be kind of just reconstructed, you know, then becomes something mm -hmm. that gets implanted in their own heads. Oh, yes, that is what I was actually meaning to say. And, you know, I started off writing articles for my brother's online magazine. Um, back in 2001 and you know he is a, a literary professor and you know so for him this is his forte written many books and had this site now for 23 years and I have dyslexia and absolutely no grammar or spelling but you know speak from the heart and so he would kind of rewrite everything and I say well that's all very well you know edit it but don't lose my voice you know, because my voice is different to yours, don't lose my voice. So eventually convinced him just to edit, but not do that. And he was actually how, really surprised of how many people responded, you know, because it wasn't kind of perfectly written. It's not about being, you know, the, the, the literary person, like a book is more diligent, isn't it, in the way that you write it because there's a formula and a flow. But for an article, for a blog, it's really as long as it's... Um, it's an easy flow for people. Really what you want is people to write from the heart. That's true. Um, and being a little bit less perfect uh, gives your readers a chance to relate to you. Mm -hmm. When you're too perfect all the time, you, you become unapproachable and people feel uh, like you're better than them. And mm -hmm. so they won't approach you and won't interact with you. Yeah. And if people do get stuck on a faux pas, a comma in the wrong place or a capital where it shouldn't be, they're not people who are interested in content. They are people who are interested in finding faults. So, you know, you're not writing for those people. You're writing for the people where your words 
are their relativity that they they hear you oh i feel that way oh that happened to you oh that i needed that right now and that's really kind of the people that contribute for you and who your audience is as people that need that that inspiration and people who who wish to inspire yes and that's what we're aiming for is to give that content that people need to pick themselves up and thrive a little bit more and anybody can thrive it's the choice isn't it you know i know that some people get knocked down over and over again or some people get knocked by cosmic two by four that really flattens them and but they find their way back up and they find their way through and i always find they are the most inspirational people because they've gone through the process and now their story is one of such inspiration but it's also an invitation it's an invitation to us and going well, if this person can, against all odds achieve that why am i holding myself back yeah exactly exactly um i have a really good friend who grew up in a idealistic lifestyle she just the perfect life and she always says to me i wish i had had your experiences she says so i can relate to more people <laughs> yes yes and uh, you know this this is the thing about life and hard knocks right it's the, not the woe is me you know it it is the the triumph of self of you know gosh i didn't know i was that strong i didn't know i was that great courageous i didn't know i had that ability and we don't know until we're willing to walk the walk. And that's really what it's all about, isn't it? Walking yeah. the walk. It is. And you find out more about yourself when you um, do something hard. Mm. And that's the truth. When you do learn anything about yourself. One I'd, time I'd like I to traveled do. across North America. You like what? No, no. Go ahead. You traveled across North America. Yeah, with two people in a car. And um, I um three weeks that we traveled that way. I was, the other two had bad backs and whatever. So I was doing all the hauling of the lug luggage and stuff. And what I learned was about my endurance and my strengths. I was really tired when I got home. I mean, it was a tough trip, but... You know, I came away with a lot of uh, pretty cool information about myself. Yeah, exhilarating, right? That's, yes. um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is, life is about participation. You know, it isn't to sit back and watch mm -hmm. somebody else live it for you. You know, you are given your life and, and you have a choice on how you live it. Not always what happens to you, but what you do with it. And it's only if you're willing to push yourself. Uh, or even just allow yourself to take a journey you know do you have that wonderful self-discovery of who you are or what you're about right now yes that's true it's all about perspective i think mm -hmm. um we choose our perspective we can't don't choose what happens not really i mean law of attraction can alter it in one way or another but we choose the perspective that's what's important the most important piece. Yeah. This um, is one of my favorite sub. Yep. Sorry. One of my favorite subjects is the subject of offense because offense is a perspective that people choose mm. for some reason. To be when offended. When you're offended, you're not happy. You're right. Yes. Yeah. And do you find that that comes from people who are feeling very insecure about themselves, insecure about their life, that they get very easily offended? I think that's part of it, but I also believe that it's part of our culture. Mm. We're taught that bit of a frozen moment here. Sorry, you froze out so there. Our Sorry. It. You froze out there. So can you just say it's part of our culture and start again there? Yeah, um, it's part of our culture. Um, we're taught that if we decide to be offended, we get to exchange. Mm. And so it's culturally acceptable to be offended. So it's not 
just insecurity. Insecurity can make it worse, but we all are raised to do it. So. And if you have found that kind of security or, or, or sense of self, you don't get so easily offended because you're secure in who you are and why you are, and you're not going to take it personally, right? Well, it took me a lot of work to get to that point. Yeah, no, it does take work. Um, it does take work. That's part of the journey of life, isn't it? To get to that point where you don't take things personally. Yes. Yes, that's true. But we're not taught that naturally. No. Even happy people get offended. Yeah. We're not taught that. No. So. I think we're taught a great deal to live, you know, in fear, in limitations, Um either you've got a family that's going to push you and want more of you than what maybe you can give or you may have a family that just thinks just you know go out and get a job and you know don't have any high ideas and that decision for ourselves of what we want to do or how we want to explore or how we want to live our lives is really up to us isn't it yeah it is absolutely um, and it's all about perspective because if your perspective is is right, you're not going to hold yourself back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I think I'm going to start a magazine, and you did, and and you didn't wait for things. Oh, I need to have you know uh, it professional and and you know high quality, and and I need to have um, you know the editor and only the best people. You wanted everybody's voice. You wanted it to be the people's voice. Yes. Everybody's story counts. That's mm. our belief. Yes. Um, and we learn so much no, from those stories. Yes, we do. And what else is there, really? I mean, you can't write an article about something that you don't know about. It's not possible. No. And, and if you did, it, it certainly reflects. You know, it just people can't connect to it, can they? You know, it is, um, no. I think we learn best through storytelling. That's the reason why we love books and that's why we love reading blogs and articles. That's the reason why we love, you know, movies and TV. We see ourselves in the storytelling. And I think it's always very, very revealing to us um, that connection that we have in that storytelling. And I think it's a wonderful place to actually t to uh, discover oneself. Because it's always like, well, could that be me? Could I do that? Uh, ooh, or, ooh, oh, I, I notice that I do that too. Maybe I shouldn't, you know? It's, and that open honesty of storytelling coming from people where it's written from the heart, that heart intent, you really do feel it. Yes, that's true. And here's the really cool magic is the one writing it also learns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So somewhere, I don't remember where, but somewhere in our about page, I speak of that, that, you know, we're also here to um, expedite our own growth through telling our stories. Yes. When I first started, uh, you know, article writing, because, um, you know, it was actually when I first got a computer, because having a computer, being a dyslectic, I would write things the wrong way. And so having the computer was easier to edit and put things back in the right order. So it didn't feel quite so, you know, frustrating. And, you know, I discovered I had a voice. And uh, I didn't know I had that voice before. I knew I was a storyteller, what came out of head straight out of mouth, but in the written word. And that really, today we're you know, grammar and, and spell check and things like this, you know, there's, we can really get the fundamentals down. And, you know, just, I know your magazine will go over the editing just to make sure everything is punctuated right. And, you know, um, obviously not an article that you don't want to produce out there. But other than that, we really got all the materials, you know, everything that we need right now, nothing to hold us back. Absolutely. Um, just the only thing that can hold you back is yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And your perspective of yourself. Yeah. Now you lived in Ontario and Norway is a very different mm -hmm. place to Ontario. Uh, and it's a diff totally Aren't different you know? part of the world. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you know, you fell in love and you decided to go and live there. 
um, but that didn't stop you doing the magazine because obviously it's online. Um, did it open up to, to people in Norway as well? I know you're predominantly an English speaking magazine, right? Uh, yes, but everyone here, most everyone here can uh, read and speak English. That's not a problem. But I do have more, a little bit more. I have a Nor Norwegian writer. He's a uh, um, uh, world-renowned uh, naturopath, actually. Mm -hmm. um, no, uh, he does, uh, I can't remember right now. I don't know why. But he's from Norway, and I wouldn't have him if I hadn't moved here. Mm -hmm. um, not a natural pet. He does homeopathy. Right. There we go. Okay. Oh, uh, so I imagine he's imparting he just... wonderful knowledge every month. Yes, he's one of my favorites, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, because it's just so rich what he writes about. Mm. And, you know, not just because somebody is qualified in their job doesn't mean they're qualified to share that story. Because you have some people that, you know, just get too caught up technically in something, you know, or, or too dry. And, but if you've got somebody who has the gift of being able to, to write the passion of their knowledge, then that really opens up for, to people to learning from it so much better, isn't it? Yes, that's true. That's true. Our, I know my editor reads his articles thoroughly every month as well. Because mm -hmm. it's just uh, very rich content and he really knows what he's doing. Yeah. So. so it's not just open to kind of, you know, everyday people. It's open to professionals to share as well. Um, yeah. If a professional wants to join us like Andreas, then uh, we're happy to take them on. Anybody right. who wants to share. Um, we're an equal opportunity if someone wants to write, we let them. Um, of course, as long as everything's uplifting. I've only ever had to ask one person to leave in 13 years. So mm. for some reason, my system of being welcoming is working. Right. Yeah, it's, it's rather like the way we do these shows. We may present a problem, but it, the whole objective is what's the solution to it? You know, how do we get through it? Yes. What, you know, what, what, what is the upliftingness of it? That's, you know, everybody has some problems in their life, but you know, they need that something that may identify the problem, but what do we do about it? That's what people want to know. What do we do about it? So if somebody can share, you know, the, the, their perspective, I went through that I'm going through, but this is what I did about it. It really kind of helps people a lot in guiding them forward on their own journey where sometimes they're just simply stuck. Yeah, that's true. Um, and that's really our goal. We believe that thriving is something you have to learn to choose. Um, so um, providing this content, this uplifting content, the solution oriented content, I think, well, it's very opposite to what the news does, isn't it? Yes. Um, it picks people up instead of putting them down or making them feel like everything is hopeless. We want to generate hope. Hope is important. Yeah. Hope is, is the ingredient for our future. You know, in, we, it's not just, well, I hope it happens. You know, it's the, the hope in that I find the skills and the tools to make it happen. And, you know, and to understand yes. that we are the solution. So we need to step up. And if we don't always know how, if we l read and listen to other people's stories, they may have gone before us and they will share their how. And then now you need to apply and participate. So yes. it's not reading the stories just simply to be uplifted. It's reading the stories as a guideline on how to apply it to your own life. Yes. Um, there's a, a sequence. It's learn one, uh, practice one, and then teach one. So I see the, the articles as the beginning of that. You read it, you learn it, you go practice it, and then you get to talk about it and help other people. Yeah. Because each voice is unique. You, you and I can talk about the exact same subject in an article and we will appeal to different people. Yeah, exactly. And, and it doesn't mean that every article you're going to agree with or you're going to resonate with because that's coming from, you know, I call it, you've created an orchestra. 
and people are contributing each one of their instruments to that orchestra. And you know, your violin may be an instrument you absolutely love, or it may be, oh God, no, this is just too dramatic for me. <laughs> you know, so you're going to be drawn to the instrument in the orchestra that really resonates with you. But you could essentially have created that orchestra that people can dip in and, and hear any instrument there. It's just a preference of choice and exploration. Absolutely. And I, I have to tell you that some of my favorite writers are the people that I don't. And is this, I can't, it's easier for me to learn from something I don't agree with than it is mm -hmm. for me to le learn something from something I do agree with. Right, because it's, it's a different so perspective. It's, so it opens you up. That's what we want people to yes. do. We want to shift the perspective. We want people to open up. Don't just see things, you know, with the blinkers on. You know, open up and, and you may not agree with it, but you understand why they think that. And that's really then you're opening up yes. and respecting other perspectives and not just riding on your own right? Because everybody has an opinion. But where's yeah. that opinion and coming it's from? Important. <laughs> it's important that we're, we're willing to accept other people's opinions, whether we agree with them or not. Right. But before I just decide I, I don't agree, I always ask, why don't I agree? Mm. Because maybe I'm missing something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's a difference with somebody kind of posting something from a different perspective that you disagree as to somebody posting something that's just out to belittle or, or condemn or damn. That's a totally different vibe altogether, isn't it? Absolutely. And we don't get any of that. Right. Ever. Not your platform. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> No. No, I, I, I once interviewed a, another podcaster and she said, well, what do you do with the hate mail? I go, <laughs> hate mail? Uh, you know, the people that hate you. And I'm like, I've never had that experience, thank God. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just, <clears throat> you know, it's free will. You know, if you're coming on, you're sharing your free will. You're sharing what you want. And, and I don't have an audience that's out there to kind of hate it, you know. So, I always say that um, not everybody's cup of tea, but in somebody's strong cup of black coffee. And if you like the coffee, you'll drink it. You know? so it's don't try and write to please everybody, right? Write from what is important no. to you. That's exactly right. And you will go collect an audience of people who are like you. And that's perfect. And they'll look forward to your article every month. Now, you charge so little, basically it's five bucks a month and people pay annually to just participate. And this is to cover all your admin costs and everything else to put the, um, the magazine up. And that is just so little to participate. Um, and, but it also means that people, you know, kind of are committed. You know, when you paid for something, you're committed to something. Um, and I think there's a sense of pride for people knowing, well, you know, I'm going to at least put out 12 articles this year. I've paid for the year. I'm going to do that. And I think it's an incentive for people to go, this is my platform. Now I'm not going to hold myself back. I am going to write something every month. And they can write up to four um, articles a month, can they not? Yes. There's a space for four articles, one in each section. Right. Do you want me to say what those are? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so the four sections are, the first one is the theme articles. And what we do is we send out three prompt words a month. Some of them are, are a little bit goofy and some of them are very deep. Um, we try to mix it up so that, you know, you can uh, explore different ideas. So if, you, if our theme word this month, say, was... Uh, love then if your article is about love then it would go in the theme section and then there's column space where everyone can write their what they want um it's the writer's space uh we don't have anything to do with that though we do have a few recommendations um about what not to do um then there's the uh inspired to do it's a how-to section and then there's the review section where writers get to review whatever they want, even their neighbor's lawn, if that's what they want to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that can be simply somebody who has a passion for their garden. 
I would like to share every month the progress of the garden, when to plant the seeds, how they're growing, because of course, your WordPress, people can post pictures with it as well. It's not just a question like a you know, written magazine where it's very hard to put any pictures in it. They can, they can take a great picture or find a graphic that speaks to it and put that in the story as well. Because a lot of people will visually eat. Yeah. You know? Absolutely, I would put that in the column though. Right, right. Um, you've made it very easy because everybody will have their own identity and they'll log in and they'll do their own thing. They can't touch anybody else's, so they have their own platform to go and do post their own um, their own postings, and it's very easy for people to do. And then they just kind of press draft and and you you know get to it when the time is ready to do the editing and uh, and the coming out. When does it come out every month? What date? Kind of is I'm it the beginning the of every month? The first. The first. Yep, usually by uh, around noon uh, Eastern Standard Time. Um, occasionally we're a bit late because, you know, sometimes stuff happens. Yes. <laughs> well, you run a website, you know. Us. <laughs> yes, yes, things going down and everything else. Yes, I know, I know. Um, and then, but, uh, and if people are submitting one, you know, they've joined up, they've submitted, and, you know, when do they normally have to have everything in by? The 16th is when the written work comes in. And if they want to put up uh, themselves reading their article, which we will put in the article for them, the due date for that's the 27th. That just gives me three days to get them in there. Right, yes. And of course, when you have so many articles, you know, you know, people don't actually understand how much work that goes in behind the scenes. You know, you've done the work, you've put it up there, and now you guys got to go and do all your thing. And, you know, people see the finished product, but, the, you know, it's, it's like when you see the credits on a movie and the credits go on for 20 minutes and there's like 10,000 people. You know? And it's like, how come there's so many people? Because it's always behind the scenes that, you know, so much work is, is being done. But that's what takes the pressure off people. They don't have to look to doing that anywhere else. They just simply submit their article and you guys do all the work. And that's where I like to be. I, yeah. I've always enjoyed being behind everything and pushing other people forward. Yes. Yeah. Hear you. I yes. get off on watching people grow. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I, I love celebrating. You know, people say, do you interview celebra uh, celebrities? And I said, they're all celebrities that come on here. I celebrate them and what they're doing. So, like, I celebrate what you're doing here. Uh, you know, I, I obviously write for my own blog, and, you know, I have another one, too, which has gone missing right now trying to find it. Um, it it's great to have another platform, you know, to, to write on. Um, I'm quite of an expressive person, and something will come to me, and I just need to do it, you know. So it's, um, it's nice to have that avenue, you know, external from myself. And I, as you said, you know, for somebody writing the first time, you know, well, I don't know, will anybody read it? You know, is it, is it something that anybody wants to know? You're not going to know until you post it right post it and post another well, one the next month and the next month and then just see how it evolves and see how your audience evolves yes and to be honest um we do everything to keep it from becoming a competition so you won't actually know unless someone leaves a comment if anybody's reading we don't want it to be about the best writers uh being obvious because that's not the spirit of what we're doing. But, um, but, I mean, know, my husband and I can see in the back. Right, right, yeah. But that, but that, if you buy a magazine, you don't go, well, how many people read this article? You wouldn't know, right? You, you could have a magazine and there's 10 articles in there and you know, some are more popular than the others. You're not going to know the numbers, so why are we so influenced by how many other people have read it? It's what is it doing for you? Right. You'll put it once you've given yes. you your baby to you. It's now in your hands. And it's also, you know, people's how many people listen to your show? All those that are ready to hear it. So an article on yes. your on your magazine, all those that are inspired to read it. It's out of your hands how many people read it after that. You are just giving the content that is inviting people to read it. Yeah. We 
have a hundred thousand people read it every year, different people. So right. somebody's reading something. Yes. That's good enough for me. Well, you know, you look at a hundred thousand people. That's a hundred thousand inspirations going out. And let's look at the ripple effect when they're inspired. How is it then rippling out from them? And that's really what we're looking at here is inspiration begets invitation. And when somebody's inspired, they are compelled to share that inspiration. And they're invited to, to inspire someone else yes. with something else. And so that 100,000, look at how that spider's web could have gone out there and how many people that it's doing. So although that's a very beautiful, significant number, um, people are get caught up today, don't they? And, you know, oh, so-and-so's got a million followers. You know, it's, that doesn't mean, you know, I always find that if people comment in my social media, I have engagement. If it's just a like, then it's just acknowledgement. I'm looking for the engagement, right? So you want people yep. that are looking forward to reading your article next month and they're looking out for it. Yep, exactly. Um, and I see it as, it's like the, the water rings when you throw a stone in the pond. Mm -hmm. The ripple. Yeah. It's more than just where the stone hit. Yeah. Yeah, ripple, that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to be tongue-tied today. <laughs> um, I had someone, I interviewed someone to join us a few weeks ago, and he said, to me well this doesn't look like it'll make much money and i said to him you know it's not the point yes it's not the point of this <laughs> yeah yeah I, I you know i know money is important hell i know money is important we've all got to eat we've all got a roof over our heads we, you know we also can't run our businesses without money never mind us making it we can't run it without money yes mm -hmm. money is important but if you're driven by the money then you're missing the point it is about the content yep. that inspires is the enrichment. If it ends up manifesting money, fantastic. But if it's driven by the dollar, you know, for me, that's not my platform. It's driven by the empowerment, the enrichment, and the abundance through the knowledge that enriches others. Should that enrichment yep. be money, great. But if it's not, it's about the enrichment of the heart, the soul, and the spirit, and the mind. This is a pay it forward mm. um, program, I believe. Yeah. And you know, so little a month, a year. Right. I mean, you know, 60 bucks a year for you to write and inspire others. You know, that is nothing. <coughs> a cup of coffee for somebody a month. Yeah. Right? And, and you know, yeah. your words out there are, are hitting someone. You know, you go, oh, I relate to that. Or, I didn't know that. Um, or, you know, that really did touch me. And again, you don't know what the reaction is going to be on the people because it's their reaction. But by putting something out there, you know, it's also, you may not know how many people have read it, but vibrationally, that vibration of how many people you have inspired has already gone out there and vibrationally is traveling through time. So why yeah, not do it, right? Absolutely. Why not do it? I, you know, you're, you're not just dedicated to the magazine. I know that you're raising your grandchildren as well who are special needs. So, you know, it's like uh, you're not just laid back here just reading the articles every month and going, yeah, I'll we'll post this one, post that one. You've got your hands full with the kids as well. Um, where you're raising the, You do, yeah. Um, and, you know, you've got a, a spouse that's wonderful to, to embrace that as well, because not everybody would. Um, and, you know, you're, you're not sitting around just lazing here. You know, you're a full-time kind of mum here as well. Um, but the passion and the conviction for the magazine is, and, and the reason why you want to put it out there is really where the drive is, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Um, but I do have other projects on the go too. So yes, you have a book um, in the works. They're a little bit on hiatus. Yeah, you have a book in the works. Yes. And obviously, yes, I do. You know, is, um, there, is there is there is there a hope deadline for that, or it's just when it will be? 
well, everything kind of got put on hold when I took my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. So um, it has to be when it comes. Yeah. But it's my favorite subject. It's about, it's about offense. It's about a, offended, sorry, about so. a what? About being offended. Mm -hmm. right. About our culture of, of offense. Yeah. And I imagine that would be quite I also have a that. huge garden. And yeah, also have? A, a huge garden. A garden. Garden. Mm -hmm. Do the kids help you with that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good nurturing place, isn't when it? When we make them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, darling, that's not a weed. Don't pull it. <laughs> yes. Um, there's something about nature and getting into the garden and, and, and planting and seeing things grow that I think grows, you know, uh, creativity within oneself as well. Yeah, I come from a farm, though I grew up on one, so. Yeah. I love growing things. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you know, you're, you're growing things in your garden, you're growing your grandchildren, and you're growing a magazine of inspiration. So I would say you're definitely, <laughs> definitely a person who invests in growing, um, in growth of other people and, and, uh, and okay. creativity. Most definitely. So how, well, how do people do, submit to you? Um, how do people kind of join up uh, to do what they you know, to be a part of it? You know, you know what are the guidelines? Uh, guidelines. Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking. For, uh, for someone to contribute, want, uh, for somebody to contribute um, an article, well, they, you know, what would be they, the process to sign they up? They would call, uh, get in touch with me, and uh, we'd have a conversation. And by the time we were done the conversation, we'd know if we wanted to work together. Um, and then they'd sign up, they'd pay their membership, and then, well, you know, you just went through the process. Yeah. Um, <laughs> My audience just doesn't know. And then you start. <laughs> right. So you and like to you start. It's not this. You like to know if people are a right fit for the magazine first. So it's not just like, oh, I can just sign up there and you have no idea who they are. You like to meet them first. I like to meet them, but I'm not interviewing. Right. I'm just getting to know them a little bit because... I find that if I do that, we both know if we connect or not. Right. And then there's no dis, uh, uh, hiring or any of that mm. going on. It's If it were, feels right, then we go ahead. Right. So it's got to be the right fit. I do the same thing. I pre-interview people. And it's, you know, is there a synergy here? Because you don't want an instrument coming into the orchestra that is completely out of tune with everyone else. So if it's a fit, you know, that you're, you're playing the same music, then, um, then everything's going to be so much more harmonious, isn't it? It's true. Yes. And people always know. I don't ever have to say, no, sorry, I'm... Yeah, I would imagine no, that you know, people have gone through everything first anyway, so they know whether they're interested or not. And it's just for you to see, you know, what, where that synergy lies. And I would also imagine that it would help with forms of editing or knowing where to place them because you, you know, have had a preview of them. Yeah, and this is built on the writer's community. Um, it's important that everyone... Uh, somehow fits into the group um uh yeah. i'm m missing words today I don't know what's going on. <laughs> you get days like that i know you're full of hay fever right now too which gives you fog brain so <clears throat> yes yes but it's finding that sure. synergy because um, you want a harmony you want a harmonious you know cohesiveness in the magazine so it's you know it's it's got to be something that fits in with the, the philosophy of the magazine Yes, absolutely. And most people, if they feel comfortable with me, they find a way to fit themselves. Mm -hmm. um, some of the writers tease me and call me the mom of the community because <laughs> yes. I know everyone. And I, I call everybody once a year or so to check in and see how they're doing and see if I can help them in any way. So I guess I'm kind of the glue for the community right. well you you're the founder you're the visionary 
you know, and yeah, the mummer, I'm the mummer of this, you know, it's, uh, it's about, this is your baby, you know, and, and a baby with kind of your school and you want to see everyone graduate, you know, like people who start off with just a blog. And then, as you said, one day they become authors of their own book. There's a certain amount of pride in that, isn't it? Because you've nurtured them in, into their possibilities. Absolutely. And really what it really comes down to is writing and storytelling. It's just practice. Yeah. Yeah. That's all it is. Just practice. You have to start to do that. And, and openness, I think, you know, there's a lot of people, they want to share the story, but they're so guarded. And if you're in protective mode, now that's not difference to say caution. There's things you want to say or don't want to say, but if you're in protective mode, you'll never let your story flow because you're always in defense of it. So I think people need to kind of kind of let that go of don't look about whether you're going to offend anyone with your story because somebody may disagree with it, right? But that's on them, not on you. Again, don't go back to taking it personally. This is your story. You own it. You stand behind it. And whatever the reactions are to it are those per people's choice of reaction. So don't yes. take it on right but you can you you can uh break through that with practice yeah as well yes it's still just practice yes practice makes perfect right does well <laughs> probably not ever but <laughs> well, I, I can guarantee you know after 19 years of writing i've still got the grammar and the spelling and everything you know in the wrong place because i also write in flow the way i speak and so, because my sentences are generally kind of quite long because I'm always in a rhythm. That's, I'm a rhythmic speaker. I'm a rhythmic writer. Um, and, you know, sometimes I prefer that it does go in that flow so people will read it in that flow and not break it up. Uh, but that's, again, it's just the way we express ourselves. And it's okay to express yourself in your way because, you know, people... You don't listen to one piece of music and say, no, no, that note shouldn't have been there. That note should have been here. You, you go with the music, right? And you have some music that's yeah. more preferable than others. So it's the same with storytelling. <laughs> and the cool thing is that we all write differently. Thank mm. God. Because yes. it makes them all different. And like for me, you say you're, you're very flowy. For me, I'm very direct and... Mm -hmm to the point that's just who I am that's the way I talk it's the way I write I don't uh, butter things up too much oh I'm, I'm a just butter to... and I'm a saucy and I'm a spicy <laughs> you, get everything, <laughs> you get everything with me you know the full 13 topping pizza definitely <laughs> I love uh, reading those kind of things but uh, I just I don't do them it's just not me but, but that's also what makes you so good at, at, at being able to put this together because you're a structural person. You get to the yeah. point, you know what needs to go in what order and how it, for it to be done. If you were flowery like me, it's harder to conduct that into an order. So yeah, I'm the chaos that's always out there flowing. You're the order. And, and that's, we need that. We need to bring our chaos to your order for it to have a platform. Yep. I love the chaos, though. Don't get me wrong. Right? <laughs> yeah. But we'll be chaotic for you. You can be our structure. <laughs> yeah. right. I'll be the conductor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, when, when we start kind of getting a little bit, you know, soloist, bring us back down <laughs> into the orchestra. Um, and that's, you know, that kind of is that mama role. You know, like yep. express yourself. Oh, okay, okay. Let's bring it down a bit Let's bring it yeah. down a bit. Let's hone it in, you know. And, and sometimes we need that, especially if we are creative people. You know, we, we can get yeah. carried away. And sometimes you need that person that's just going to hone us in. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But so I do you, write too. Right? Right? Mm -hmm. And you write every month yourself? I wish I had time. I don't. I don't. I'm, I'm lucky if I get a couple in a year right now with kids around. Right. How old are the children? Uh, Grace will be 10 in August. And Aiden is 14. Um, but like we you pointed out, they're special needs kids. So they take a lot of attention. <laughs> yes. Yes. But, you know, a lot of love from you. You know, the fact that you, <coughs> you, 
you went back to Canada to get them to bring them back to Norway and raise them, you know, says a great deal about you, you know, you, the practical side of knowing what they need, but the heart side of it, of, you know, this is your, this is your time meant to be for yourself. And here you are, you know, going back into raising kids again and, and kids with special needs, which requires special time, special patience. And perhaps because you are a person that knows how to address things as is, is probably the gift that you've been given in order to manage that. So, you know, we, we have to look at what we've been given and embrace it because that's our gift that we're bringing to the table. Yes, absolutely. I agree. Okay. For you know, for the for the readers, you know, this is this is a sit back, grab your tablet, you know, put your feet up, and just just let the magic happen, and uh, and just dive into one article after the other because there's so much here to read, and it's so simple. You know, all they need to do is go to themagichappensnow.com, and they will see you know all the various articles here, and they can just literally choose. Which one? Or, or simply go through all of them. I mean, how many do you get a month? On a, on a um, whole? It varies, um, anywhere between 20 and 40. It depends on how many writers we have active at the, at the moment. Right. Like at the time. Like this month is 20 articles. Um, but you know what's really cool is because we only publish once a month. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do it all at once. You won't yeah. lose it. It'll be right. there for the month. And, and is it archived? Of course. So of people course. can go back and look at the ones that you have going back as many years? Yep, 13 years. Excellent. So 13 years of articles here, um, yeah. so, which is, is wonderful. Um, and, you know, so this is really literally put your feet up in the window with the sun streaming in, a nice cup of coffee or a glass of wine, and just dive right in and take the journey. Because, you know, this... The reason I do what I'm doing is I love hearing how people came about doing what they're doing. Where is the passion and the conviction, you know, and why they do what they do, the love of it and how it serves other people. And, you know, you found your passion, your love. Um, your husband joined you on this because I know you were doing the magazine before you met him. And of course, now mm -hmm. you're balancing it with raising the children. You literally moved on the other side of the world as well, but you didn't let this stop you. And it's open to anybody that's, um, you know, English writing, right? Um, yep. English speaking, English. English writing. So if you've got something to contribute, so whether you just want to sit back and enjoy all the articles or whether you feel, you know, maybe this is a time to, to, to try my hand at this. I've got something to say. I'm going to see, you know, dip my toe in and, and I'm going to commit to one article a month for a year and see where it goes. And, you know, see yep. how I enjoy it, see how I evolve in this. And because we do learn through other people's journeys, through the sharing of others. And so it's don't be afraid to participate and most certainly, you know, enjoy the gift of all the reading here. You're feeling down today. You're feeling exhausted. You know, you're feeling a little in despair, especially with all this COVID thing going on. Do we go out? Don't we go out? Is there a second wave? Isn't there a second wave? You know, and, and reading something that's one of encouragement or love or just can transform you somewhere else it is just it's heart and soul feeding. And we yeah. need that. We need that desperately. <laughs> May I add something? Please, um, add away. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a bit of an introvert, I guess. Um, <laughs> the um, people who have um, products, like wisdom products and services, um, this isn't going to make them rich, but there is a great deal of uh, marketing uh, through this for very little money. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, we have a hundred thousand readers and yeah. uh, all of the writers contribute to the marketing. So it's over the years grown. Last yeah. year we had 4 million hits. Wow. Divided by a hundred thousand readers. Yeah. So they're yeah. reading a lot. It's not people coming once. Right. So it's not a Most sales people. pitch. It's a game that inspiration. If people are inspired by your storytelling and now you have a link that goes back to what you are servicing, selling or servicing, mm -hmm. you know, if it's the same with people who listen to the shows, if they're inspired by you and what you do, they want to be a part of what you do. 
Uh, and so that's the same with the articles. You know, I love this person's writing. I want to see what else they do. So you're not yeah. saying write a pitch and a sales pitch, write something inspirational that will want, invite people to want to know more about you and more about what you do. Yeah. Um, my education is in marketing. And one of the things that I've always worked with was the idea that people want to get to know who you are. Yeah. And then they'll learn to like you. And once they like you, they'll start to trust you. And after they trust you, then they will buy you. Yeah. Yes. Like, yes. Yeah. I mean, first and foremost, you're selling yourself before you're selling anything else you do. Or absolutely. Have. People want to know you care before they're yeah. going to give you their money. Oh, yeah. You know, this is, um, you know, we, we, have, we have been for so long in marketing, which I think is one of the reasons why you left, you know, the pitching of marketing was to appeal to the wrong side of us and, you know, kind of almost trying to get you hooked that you needed something because you felt inadequate. And, you know, it's, no, I don't need to buy that because I feel inadequate. You know, I'm buying it because it will make me feel more enhanced or it is a con contribution to what I'm doing. So, I think we're going totally <coughs> swinging the other way, aren't we? Where we want authenticity. We want yep. to know people are doing this because it's coming from their heart. It's coming from their passion. If you're just out to make a quick buck, it's a different platform altogether. If you're really wanting to make an impact on someone's life, these are the platforms for you. Yeah. If you want to make money, go make something like Coke. <laughs> <laughs> A cola? Yeah. <laughs> oh, which Coke are you talking about? It's <laughs> certain to you that you need a product that is a quick, fast sale. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If you're selling wisdom products, it's not a quick, fast sale. No. It's a slow process. It's seeding. And it's an important process. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's seeding and watering and nurturing. You know, and, you know, I'm sure people have favorite, um, you know, uh, postings every month. They look for that person. Can they put yeah. the person's name in, in a search and, and their article will come up or they have to go through all the articles to find them? We always had that, but my husband realized the other day that it went missing. So ah. mm -hmm. we will get it back. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes. I know. It's, this is we the thing about where. technology. It is absolutely wonderful until you realize it's not working. Yes, I know. I've, I've got a few yes. things to do on mine. It's like, well, oh, hang on. Where did that go? Yeah. Um, However, if you find that uh, article by that person and you click on their name, it should give you a list of everything they've done. Right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Because when you do find somebody that, oh, I really like what this person has to say, you want to go back and read everything that they've done. So, yeah. Absolutely. Just, just uh, you know, become their fan, you know, because that's, we're not writing for the adulation. You know, we're writing from that conviction of wanting to share something. You know, I yeah. want to share this. It, whether it has any meaning to you or not is up to you. But it had meaning enough from me to want to share it. Yeah. It's the pay it forward thing. Yeah. Exactly. It and, is and that. Have you seen some different type of articles in this last couple of months due to the COVID? You know, a lot more people trying to boost people up, inspire people and get through it. I did one on, on it myself. So, you know, it's... You know, because I think at the present moment, people are in such unsure times that they well, that, can only need that encouragement. That's true. And we, but it wasn't unexpected. Mm. Um, I find that the magazine tends to shift with the world, mm. ebb and flow into whatever's going on. Um, and that's great, right? In quiet yes. times, it's all teaching things about um, spirit and love and heart and those things. And when there's turbulence of some kind going on, that shows up. Yeah. And that's perfect, right? Yes. Yes. And, you know, again, it's that relatability. You know, you listen to a song, you watch a movie, you read a book, you read an article, and it goes, oh, I relate. This is speaking to me. And this is, you know, what we're trying to do when we write. We're trying to speak to you. We're trying to speak with you. We're trying to engage you in a conversation that that conversation now becomes internal with you 
or external yes. with people around you. You know, it's, uh, it's to spark that conversation around you. And that's the reason why we write. And so, you know, whether a person is a, a novice at this, but, you know, really wants to share their story, it even could be people that have a lot of story to share, but they could break it down each month into, you know, basically chapter one, two, and three, and just do a blog every month on sharing that story and how it unravels because it doesn't have to yep. be something different every month. It can be a continuum, right? I've had people write books that way. Yeah. Yes. So each month is a different type of chapter. I mean, is there a limit on the words that people can um, well, submit? 10,000 pixels. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, you know, I'm kidding. I have no attachment to that because the people that you attract will want to read the amount that you write. Right. The people I attract will want to write, read the amount that I write. Right. We have no space issue because it's right. all on the internet. So. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Oh, this is wonderful. I'm very proud to be a part of it. Thank you so much for letting me in. Um, as I said, it's, it's always lovely to have another avenue, you know, and sometimes I get so caught up in what I do because I obviously do the audio and video blogs every week that it's sometimes nice just to have that written one somewhere else. And I know that, you yeah. know, if, if people have got some sort of audio, they can put that in there as well. Um, you know, it's, it's WordPress, which is wonderful. It's a great platform. It's what we use as well. And, uh, you know, it's just nice to have another avenue, another audience that is, that is focused because basically that's what your audience is. is they're, they're focused on this. They look forward every month to the new articles coming out and what's there. So you've obviously got dedicated readers. And again, that ripple effect, you know, of who, who it goes out to and how it affects people. It's just wonderful knowing that maybe in some small way you're contributing. I think it's uh, much bigger than small. <laughs> to be well, you know, every drop in the ocean counts, right? You know, and, yeah. that's, and so, you know, it's don't look to being the whole ocean. That's too much of a burden. But if, you know, if the drops that you're putting in, it's like aromatherapy, you know, some of it is so condensed. All you need is a couple of drops for a massive impact, you know, so yeah. be that aromatherapy, a couple of drops that has a big impact. But once you give it over, you know, nurture it, share it, right? Because once it's up there, share the magazine, share everything else. But at the same time, let it go because it's now out of your hands. Yeah. Well, I found out how big this actually is um, in its way. My mother, who is a senior, was uh, talking to a young lady at a, a senior center she used to visit. And she told her about my magazine and the lady said, Oh, yeah, I read that. Yeah. So, you know, it's out there. <laughs> yes. And you, and you just don't know. That's the thing. You, you're putting it out there. You're not dictating where it goes. You're just allowing it to flow, go out there where it needs to go. And, you know, if you like something, you're going to want to share it. Have you read those articles in this magazine? You know, and, and how many people, even seniors, are now going to tablets? You know, yeah. like, you know, um, especially, you know, during this COVID thing, you don't want to touch the magazines <laughs> physically, you know, at the tablet. Uh, but there's so much more on the tablet that they can read, you know. And so it's, it's, it doesn't, there is no age barrier, is there? Do you have an age barrier on people who come and write? Do you have young people that write for you? Um, yes, I have. Um, I don't think any of them are currently writing, but uh Young people are a little harder to hold in there. Yes. <laughs> Keep focused. <laughs> they wander off. <laughs> yes. And they'll wander back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we've had fairly young people. Good. I think Good. Uh, 21 was the youngest. Wonderful. Great. Yeah, because, you know, it doesn't matter about the age. Because the... You know, if we understand how a youthful person looks at something, it reminds us that we were once young and we had that perspective perhaps at that time. But it's also great for a young person to look at somebody who's got a few decades on them and go, well, yeah, you, you know, you had, you were young once and this is the journey you've taken and this is the inspiration, the way you still live life. Uh, so, you know, they learn from their elders. So again put it out there don't be afraid to share we need the sharing absolutely absolutely we do 
And I just wanted to add that um, I'm proud to have you. Oh, thank you. And uh, you're a very pretty lady. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> the old bag you're at 65 here. <laughs> it must be the filter. <laughs> Did you say 65? Don't yeah, I'm 65. Yeah, I'll be 66 in October, so 65 and a half now. Yeah. You don't look yeah. at all 65. Ah, thank you. It, it, it just depends on what time of day. <laughs> well, there is. <laughs> this is I, the end know, of my day. <laughs> the end of your day and the beginning of mine. And, and and the thing, I think, when I first started doing video podcasts, you know, I said, who wants to watch an old bag do video? And uh, and then, you know, the back of my head, the, the voice came forward straight away. And said, but Sarah, it's not about the way you look. It's about the content. And if they're bothered by the way you look, they're not ready for the content. And, you know, and that's the thing. You, you haven't got a big shiny magazine out there. It's all, you know, Oprah glossy and all of that. You've got a wholehearted, very easy function um, magazine online that is so easy to find the articles, so easy to, to follow through. Um, it, it's simplistic and honest and clear. And so yep. sometimes we get caught up with shiny and an image yeah. that we forget about where is the real content, right? And so it's about the content. That's true. Somebody has a problem with how you look, then they have a lot of issues oh, yes. that have nothing to do with that. <laughs> yes, definitely. And <laughs> we don't play to that audience. We play to the audience who just want authenticity, honesty, love, people coming from a place of real compa compassion and conviction and wonderment, yeah. right? I mean, it's, I'm sure the reason why you always love doing marketing and, and going into the storytelling, because it's always the wonder of what else you can learn. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, learning a, and curiosity um, have been the hallmarks of my life. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you've got a platform that will keep on growing. You know, my brother's been doing this now for 23 years, keeps saying he's going to quit. And, and people keep sending articles in. Uh, he hasn't monetized it, though. I wish he had. Um, but that's 23 years of content. That is, yeah. you know, an encyclopedia. I've got 2,500 shows here. I call it the Orchard of Wisdom. You know, it's not every show is for everyone. Not every article is for everyone. But all you need is a few that really speak to you and it really can change your whole yeah. perspective of life and um, maybe point you in a direction or just be there for you as a friend at the time of need. So yeah. it's just be willing to, to or on a rainy day. On a rainy day. Yeah, exactly. So to look at the magazine and, and uh, do, can people subscribe to it? Um, yes, but it's not really necessary. You just bookmark it. Right. Because, um, there's nothing to do but read. Right, exactly. So um, give the site name and then also how people can get hold of you if they wish to be a part of it. Okay, it's um, www.themagichappens. Don't forget the S, mat, themagichappens.com. And if you want to get a hold of me, just put cat instead of www. Cat. Is it cat at or just cat dot magic happens? Cat. No, cat at themagichappens.com. Excellent. Yeah. And so simple. You mean, I mean, I'm going to be sharing this with a number of, of, of my friends that I know that love to write and, you know, and, and I know that their wisdom you will love. And, you know, because we're always looking for that avenue to, to get our word out, not because we think our word is so important. It's just that we love getting our word out of anything that can breed some hope breed some inspiration, breed some love, you know, just something to say to people, we're there for you. We're going through this too. We're sharing with you. And that collaboration and that compassion for one another, you know, that community, that's what we're looking yeah. for, right? Well, let me just say that your word is that important. Everyone's word is mm -hmm. that important. Everyone's voice is important because everyone will speak to someone different. Yes at different levels, at different stages in life. So do not use the other C word, which is called compare or <laughs> no, compete. No. This is not a competition. It's not a comparison. It is about no. your voice and your voice speaking to somebody who's ready to hear you. Exactly. Yes. Excellent. Wonderful. So it's cat at um, 
themagichappens.com or www.themagichappens.com. Go and take a look now, folks. All right, Grant, put your feet up, relax. Start reading some stories and uh, be inspired. And if you feel that you've got a story to share, please, 60 bucks a year. It is nothing for you to sign up and, and contribute one to four postings a month, depending how you know prevalent you want to write. I know I've got a couple more to come this month. And just let it flow. Let it flow and let it go. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> Give it over to Kat and she will put it out there for you. And now you just nurture it when it's out there and, and just let it go and do the, the job it's meant to do. Absolutely. Yep. Share. share. Just share. Just share. Just share. That's what we should be doing with everything. Just share. Yes. And share and celebrate and support, right? Yep. That's why it's free because we just want to share. Yes. Yes, you know, where, where people say, why don't you charge for people to listen to your shows? I, I will have a sponsorship button if people wish to support it, but because it's a library, you know, libraries are free. You know, knowledge, I think, should be free. People pay to come on, but the, the knowledge out to the audience is free. Uh, you're yeah. doing the same thing. I'm just doing it in a slightly different way, but, you know, that, I love this whole magazine idea, and uh, I certainly... As I reconstruct my site, it will most certainly have a permanent link here leading it to it as uh, kind of an affiliate um, platform well, here. And we get so caught up in the treadmill of our mind, especially if you're watching the news or you're hearing the hysteria out there, the CNN effect, take a pimple and make it into a volcanic eruption. And sometimes you just need to switch all of that off and just dive into some wonderful stories and just read one after the other and let it warm your heart, let it warm your spirit, let it comfort you, let it be that blanket that warms you. And it's your deep breath. It's your deep breath to know oh, it's okay. I don't need to buy the hysteria. Right. And so, you know, this is, this is what it's all about. Right, love? Yes, absolutely. And you don't have to let it. Right. Exactly. So, please reach out, read some of the articles. I'm enjoying writing for it. I'm enjoying reading some of them. I've got to make more time to do that. I don't ever get to put my feet up and have a glass of wine <laughs> reading anything. We've got to designate some time for ourselves, Kat. Yes, we do. <laughs> I got figure to about time. yeah it's, yeah it's that priority you've got to put some time aside right yeah um but you know what but we we don't i'm sure you don't either we don't kind of consider this work although there is work involved in it it's it's a true passion of what we do right yes it's my joy and my yeah. passion yeah yeah and my giving people Yes, yes. Oh, I'm glad you said that. Yeah, because it's, it is your contribution. You know, people are looking for solutions. They're looking for support. And you're giving it in the form of the magazine, you know, where other people are, are the ingredient in that dish. So yes. it is your contribution. So thank you so much for that contribution. And uh, all people have to do is partake. That's all. Whether they want to write for it or whether they want to read it, just partake, right? Partake. So, partake. I like that. Partake. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like dessert. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm sure it could be very, very delicious. <laughs> Many of the articles. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much, Kat, for sharing with us today, for putting the magazine together, making it so affordable and so easy for people to use because it really is easy, folks. And just let your wings go, whether you want to write for it or whether you just want to read it. But, you know, every single one of us has got a story. Every single one of us, even if it's just like something that happened one time in your life and it changed your direction, that's a story. Get out and share it and just be inspired by your own story because then you're going to inspire somebody else by it. Never apologize, never compare, never compete. Just be inspired and to want to share. So thank you, Kat. Thank you. Thank and you so much. Oh, my pleasure, sure. my pleasure. <laughs> And until next time, folks, remember, get out and read. It will feed you. Until next time, bye for now. We hope you enjoyed the show. We look forward to bringing you more shows. Please go to selfdiscoverymedia.com slash shows, and you will see the incredible lineup of genres and shows that we have for you. We are here to make a difference in your life. Thank you for listening.